All right, Sean Mahaffey here. We're going to talk about uh, mortar mix today. Uh, these old homes, 80, 100 year old homes, were built with basically a lime, where they were a lime based mortar, pretty much lime and sand. They got their sand out of the river and they threw lime into it and they made a mortar mix out of it. It's not a bad mortar mix. I kind of like it. It's a weak mortar mix and it does need rest, you know, tuck pointing over time. But it's got the ability to flex and move. Um, and on these old homes, a lot of the brick is a sand brick, uh, or the old brick wasn't fired. It's not as hard as the new brick is. So if you come in with a new um, Type S mortar, even a Type N mortar, it's too hard for the brick. And it doesn't match anyway. So uh, we're going to use the aggregate on this is a bigger aggregate. I'm actually going to use an all-purpose sand, which has bigger pebbles in, in it than the play sand. If you go to the hardware store, you'll see play sand and all-purpose sand. All-purpose has bigger, you know, bigger grit sand in it. And you can buy even bigger. I'll actually add uh, a portion. I'll take out a portion of this sand and add in a portion of uh, even bigger aggregate sand, mix it into the whole mix. That way it'll come out with big pebbles in it when I'm finished. Um, for, for what I call a, you know, I guess you'd call it a half a batch. It's about a half a wheelbarrow mix. Um, we'll use a bucket of sand, and in that bucket of sand, this is a two pound coffee can. I like to use these because a little bit more accurate than using a shovel. So when somebody says a shovel of sand, uh, and a shovel of lime or a shovel of cement, you know, you're always a little high and a little low. If you use a coffee can like this, you can make it the same way every time, just like baking. So I'll use two coffee cans of sand, or uh, two coffee cans of lime, and a half a coffee can of white Portland. And I got white Portland instead of gray, because again, that was originally lime and sand, if I use gray, it's going to come out gray and it isn't going to match. And I'd say matching's half the battle with, with doing restoration work. I mean, ideally, you want things to look like they weren't fixed. I've already put my ratios together. So there's a, I've got a bucket of sand here, and I've got my uh, Portland, uh, white Portland and lime already mixed there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use what's called. Uh, buff color, a light buff. Uh, if you look at this mortar, in a lot of places, it's got a faint tan coloring to it where it's oxidized. In some places, it's a little gray, and I'll cut a gray mix into the white mix in places. The way we're going to do this is we're going to take a, you know, a, probably a half a cup of light buff into that mix and we're going to mix everything up dry sand, color, lime and cement we're going to mix it up dry and get a good consistent mix and then I'll take out a portion of that dry mix, add a little water to it and I'm going to dry it out and then I'm going to check it up against the brick and the mortar and see how the color comes out another thing I learned the hard way when you're going to strike mortar and you use a color you might get your color perfect uh, if you dry it out, say, on the ground and you, you're doing your prep work and you dry your mortar out on the ground, it comes out, you hold it up, and it looks great. You put it in the wall and you strike it. And that striking, the action of striking it, can bring the color to the surface and go a shade darker than you want to be. So sometimes, if you're going to strike something, it's better when you do your prep work to grind out a little section, a little test section, put your mortar in and strike it and then let it cure and see if that works. Um, there's faster ways to dry out mortar. You can use a hair dryer, you can put it in your truck on a board. You can actually take a, a piece of this paper here and get your mortar, wet mortar and dry it and, and, and it'll dry out quick. Now that's a quick way of doing it, but it's not an accurate way of doing it and it can bite you in the ass if you're not careful. So for absolute accuracy, let things cure at the rate that they're going to cure normally and you're going to come out you know perfect because you can match it in and say that works and go and go and do it and you're good so that's more